All right, so the amount of work done on an object by a given force can be calculated by using the formula work is equal to force times distance or displacement times the cosine of the angle. Now, the idea is it's the angle between, all right, angle between the force and displacement. So there's an example, there's a question on here that you will we'll get to, but it says like, hey, on a, on a roller coaster, the cable is going to drag this roller coaster cart, all right, the cable cart, upwards on this ramp. So the force from the cable is going in this direction. Now, even though the track is at, let's say, an angle of 30 degrees, is there any difference in angle between F and D? Remember, because this, this cart isn't moving 30 degrees this way. Right? It's not it's not moving horizontally, so we don't actually need to use the angle because the force and distance or displacement are going in the same direction. The angle would be zero degrees. All right, so there's a there's like a trick question in in here somewhere for you with that. So then what we would do is, all right, a force of uh, 100 newtons is applied to a 15 kilogram object at a hor uh, and a horizontal distance of five meters at a constant speed. All right, so this 100 newton force moves this 15 kilogram object five meters, constant speed. Okay, so they're not telling me anything with a direction. Okay, we're applying the force, and so we're assuming that it's moving in the same direction, five meters. In which case, they didn't give me a direction, so cosine is zero. So force is 100, distance moved five. Cosine of zero is – cosine of zero comes out to always be number – like one. So it's basically like that's not even there. So in which cases we have 100 times 5, and we get 500 joules. Now on this problem, it's again a 100 newton force, but now it's applied at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So this right here is my theta. Okay, well, it also moves a distance of five meters, but it's horizontal. So it's moving in this direction. It's not moving like this. It's not moving in the same direction as my force. If that was the case, like as a, for on the roller coaster, then the cosine would be zero. So we take a force, 100, times the distance that it traveled – times cosine of 30. And so when you type that into your calculators, guys, that is what you should come up with, right? 433.01. So we do 100 times the distance times cosine of our angle. And yes, you get your 433.012 and change, and the unit is joules. And then this one here, an upward force is applied to lift a 15 kilogram object upwards, right, to a height of 5 meters at a constant speed. So constant speed, great, which means if that's the case, the pull force has got to be equal to the weight. And that is why to we, we're not given like 100 newtons or anything like that here, we're given just the mass. So to find the force at which you're pulling, you need to do mass times gravity. Now we're using 10 for our calculations because it comes out nicer. Mass times gravity times the distance of 5 meters. And again, they didn't give us an angle. And if we're moving it up and it's, all right, we're lifting upward and it moves upward, cosine is zero. So it's uh, 150 times 5 and it comes out to be 750 joules worth of work. Now, we can talk about some of this in a second. Down here, there's a question. All right, uh, someone's designing roller coasters and they're 
figuring out, okay, how much force the cables would need to apply, all right, at such and such an angle over how much distance. And so they're just trying to say, like, all right, well, which angle is providing the most work? So it's a kind of a trick question. So like the example I said with my dog, okay, if my dog is being lazy and just plops down on the ground because he doesn't want to leave the park and I'm pulling on the leash with a with 35 degrees worth of, all right, from the dog itself, the dog is moving in this direction. So in which case, yes, we use the angle. But on the roller coaster, no matter what, even if it's at 35, 45, 55, the force from the chain on the roller coaster cart is going to drag it on the track. It's not it's not causing it to go completely horizontal. It's following, all right, it's following the track. And since it's following the track, the angle between force and distance is zero for all of them. And so when you do this calculation, we're, we're not even pretending, we're basically pretending like these aren't there. And it would just be force times distance, force times distance, force times distance, because cosine of zero is equal to one. And these come out to be very, very, very similar. All right, very, very, very similar. All right, so basically our answer would just be pretty much the same. All right, everything is works out pretty much the same. Cool. All right, so guys that need to head to Vokes, got that? Yeah? Okay, so what I want you to do though is I want you to finish the um, the first thing we did on the back side. There's 10 problems, should take you maybe all of five minutes. All right, it's just a quick multiply, divide thing. All right, my guys right here, I want to go get this going here to the front side. <clears throat> All right, we're going to get this going to the front side. Let him up. All right. So an impulse, guys, is a force acting over some amount of time to cause a change in momentum. On the other hand, work is a force acting over some amount of distance to cause a change in energy. Now they want you to indicate whether or not these are uh, these examples are work or not. A teacher applies a force to a wall and becomes exhausted. So if I pushed on the wall as hard as I could, am I doing work? Yeah. Correct. Good. Why? Well, yeah, there's a force, but no displacement. You can start to like simplify these. You don't need to write these out word for word. Basically, I'm applying a force. There is no displacement. So that's why the answer is no. Okay, a weightlifter lifts a barbell over his head like a shoulder press. Is work being done like that? Yes. yes. Why? All right. The force causes displacement in the same direction. All right. Force causes displacement in the same direction. C. Ah, I think I gave you guys, I kind of helped you guys with this one earlier because I think I did this as an example. Uh, a waiter carries a tray full of meals across a dining room at a constant speed. No. Very good. Okay. Very good. Why? Well, you're applying an upward force, but it moves horizontally. Okay. Upward forces don't cause horizontal displacement. Yes, sir. What? No, what's up? What's up? You're 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 smirking. What's what's funny? I like to know jokes. Okay, that's all we need to say, guys. If we're if I'm moving a little too quick, that's all we need to say. All right. But we also have to make sure that we are working. All right. Now, 
a marble hits a note card and it moves across the table. Is work being done like that? So thinking about, right, if this is my hand, all right, if this is the note card and a marble comes crossing, crumbs along, hits the note card and they move in the same direction, is that work being done? Very good. Yes, all right. Again, you can you guys want to simplify these things right here in the red. You want to simplify what's in the red. Okay. Marble applies a force to card moving it across. All right, moves it across. So the marble, no card, force moving the same direction. They're all very, very similar in these kinds of is it work or is it not? The explanations, you don't have to get as complicated as these, okay? And then a shot putter. Does anyone know what shot put is? All right. Can you demonstrate what it would look like? Just not the whole spin thing, but like a throw. All right. So basically you got like, well, how heavy is the... Uh, Maybe Olympics or yeah, I don't, I don't know. What is eight pounds, ten pounds. It's something like that. It's, it's... Someone Google it real quick. Yeah, I'm recording. Well, yeah, you you do the spin in order to help gain some momentum, yeah. right? To build up speed, and all all that is to help your body going to do like this motion, right? So you're holding it like close to your ear. 16? Okay. So you're holding it close to your ear, right, usually? And so work is not being done right now because I'm applying a force upward and it's not moving upward. Now, like, they do the spin, spin. Now, as I go like this and extend my arm, because I'm extending my arm and the ball moves in that direction, yes, work is being done. All right, so the shot putter, um, if we wanted to try and simplify this, the shot putter applies a force and moves the ball from compressed to stretched, from compressed to outstretched, in order for him to launch the ball uh, you know, farther. So guys, if you missed some of these, if you missed copying some of that down, all right, or want to write, wanted to write out the full, full thing, you can take a picture of that real quick. Or again, this will be, once I post this video, the video will be up on Google Classroom. You guys can then just go through and pause it at whatever the point is. Um. Okay, so work for the letter three. Yes, letter three, number D. All right, work is a scalar quantity and a positive or negative sign on a work value indicates information about whether or not work is going to add or remove energy from that object. Now the last one here, um, it says, okay, which sets of units, legitimate units here, represent the quantity for work? Now, it tells you A, B, C, and F. I just want you to have A and B, Joule and Newton meter. All right. And then the very last thing. So we did a big part of this. I, I told you guys kind of what to write down for here. Yeah. Right. We did the whole thing with the little angles and whatnot. All right. And then it asks whether or not here um, indicate whether or positive or negative work is being done on an object. So if it's like causing it to slow down kind of negative work, right? So a car moving to the right 
experiences or skids to a stop across dry pavement. Guys, if something's skidding, what is it usually experiencing? Slowing down, right? Of some sort. Sliding. Sliding, which, what? Friction. So what I showed was like, okay, F, my force is friction force, which goes against motion. So that's why it's negative. I put negative work because it's slowing it down there. A freshman stands on their toes, lifts a book upward to the top shelf of their locker. So they apply force upward and it moves upward. Positive work. Roller coaster car is lifted to the peak. All right, so that was kind of like this. All right, the force of the chain is pulling the, the cart, the roller coaster cart, in the same direction. So in that case, positive work. A catcher, all right, holds out its uh, mitt and catches a baseball. So the ball's coming in this way. It's going to move backwards slightly when you catch it. Very, you like usually kind of bring your hand backwards a very slightly, a little bit of give, all right, while you're applying a force in the opposite direction. So negative work is being done. And then a parachuter or parachutist, I didn't know that was a word, opens the chute. That sounds like such an awesome chute. Oh, man, shoot. Like normally when you hear shoot, you're thinking S-H-O-O-T. Not shoot. All right, so you open your parachute, and it slows down. So the force, what's happening, all right, there's an increase in air resistance force that this thing is going to catch. So the force upward is still going to, is causing you to slow down, but what happens? You're still falling downward as you're skydiving. All right, so this is why it is negative work. All right, so you guys have now completed this whole thing the only other thing that you guys will do and you if you have a if you, you might oh, I swear to God you might be able to finish it right now it's on the back side of these all right work the unit is joules force Newtons distance meters and on the front side it has the units and whatnot for power power is work divided by time the unit for power is the watt, W-A-T-T. For work, all right, it's the joule, T, we're going to use seconds. Watt? Yes, watt. Can you go back up? Yes. So, like, yep, I just want to make sure we have that. You'll need power for six and eight, but everything else you should be able to do with this. There's only one other thing. Uh, I don't believe I have it on here, actually. Let me get a look. No. No, you don't need to worry about that right now. All right, so we're good. Okay, using this equation and the power equations, you're going to want to find work first. And then you can do uh, find power. Now... In number eight, they actually give you work. So like 50 joules over five seconds will be your power. But depending on what they're asking, right? So they give you newtons, which is F, joules, which is W. How far? In this one, they're looking for D. So if you use the triangle at the top, the distance is going to equal work divided by the force. So for number two, you would say... In number two, you asked, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm taking 20 times 200, right? Because they want work, so work is force times displacement times the cosine. Since there is no angling, guys, in any of these, you don't need to worry about actually using cosine, all right? So force times distance, yeah, it's going to move 20 meters after with pull. Yeah, so 200 times 20. Yep, that's the unit for work. All right, right on.